So here we have here we have a proof. This proof could be completed using the the inference rules, but for the sake of illustration, I'm going to solve it using the indirect proof method. So when we do an indirect proof, the first step we write four to number our next inference. And then the next thing we do is we indent. And the next thing we do is we draw a line. So first we indent, then we draw a line. And then the next thing we do is we make an assumption. And the assumption is indented, and it's behind a line. The assumption is always the negation of what you're trying to prove. Now, we're trying to prove, in this case, A. We want A to be the very last line of our proof. So we're going to assume, as our assumption, the negation of what we're seeking to prove, the negation of A. So I'm trying to prove A. I will assume tilde A. The assumption will always be exactly what you're trying to prove or trying to reach, except with a tilde added to its left. I write AP. And AP stands for assumed premise and says this is an assumption. It's an, ass an assumed premise. It's not one of the initial original premises. Now, using this assumption and any of the original premises, my goal is to reach, using the rules, a contradiction. And a contradiction is going to be defined as any statement of the form P ampersand not P. So in order to count as a contradiction in this system, a statement has to be of the form P ampersand not P. So examples of a contradiction would be O ampersand not O, G ampersand not G, R ampersand not R, O wedge W ampersand not O wedge W, and so forth. So I'm after a contradiction. Now I look at this, and I have not A, and I look up here and I see that this and this forms the disjunctive syllogism pattern. And so I'm going to, from A wedge B and not A, I'm going to infer B by disjunctive syllogism 1 and 4. P wedge Q, the, t the negation of the P allows me to bring down the Q. It's a phone. And so now I'm looking up above, and I see that this and this line forms the modus ponens pattern. Because I have P and P horseshoe Q, modus ponens says, in that case, I can infer the Q. So I'm going to infer the Q part of the P horseshoe Q. P, P horseshoe Q, bring down the Q. And that's modus ponens 2 and 5. P, P horseshoe Q, infer Q. Now, as long as I reach a contradiction, I win. And I see the not C here, and the not C, the tilde C, is to the right of a conjunction. So when I see the conjunction, I know I can apply simplification and bring either side down of my choice. So I'm going to infer the not C, the tilde C by applying simplification to line 3. I just removed, I just inferred this, brought it down. And now I can conjoin 6 and, let's see, 4, 5, 6 and 7. I can conjoin 6 and 7, C ampersand tilde C, that's conjunction. 6 and 7. I just took this line and this line and put them together with an ampersand in the middle. That's conjunction. And this is a contradiction. It's a statement of the form P ampersand tilde P. So I've reached a contradiction. And next, my numbering's not very, very, very lined up with my premises. but. But now that I've reached a contradiction, I disindent 
and I assert the conclusion I originally thought to prove, which is going to be the same as what I assumed minus the tilde. So I'm going to assert A, the opposite of what I assumed. I'm going to write IP, standing for indirect proof, and I'm going to cite the indented lines that I, that I used, lines 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. IP lines 4 through 8. And that's how you do an indirect proof. You start by assuming the negation of the conclusion you're seeking to prove. You then use the premises and that assumption, if you wish, and you derive a contradiction using the rules. And if you reach a contradiction, any statement of the form P and not P, and it can be any contradiction. I could have derived A and not A here. But anyway, I, I derived the contradiction. I disindent and assert the conclusion that I originally sought. It's always going to be the opposite of what I assumed. And I write IP 4 through 8. That's an indirect proof. Good luck.